next the real news actually when i put this up i need some i need a good old-fashioned old school meme to show you guys this um this disappeared for like years and now it's famous like i think a lot of people know what this is but um in case you're new in case you're like a child or rather you're 18 years old and you just turned 18 and you were eight when gamergate happened literally this is mount cringemore a long time ago there were a bunch of nerds who were upset about video games specifically um they were upset that games journalists because back in the day back in 2014 when this happened uh people still took took journalists seriously even people who were young and maybe a little bit more conservative leaning they took journalists seriously so when they discovered that very bad games were getting very good reviews in jur journalism or uh, in video game press uh, they looked into it a little bit and they decided that there must be something going on and as it turns out it was true a woman named zoe quinn also known as chelsea falkenberg uh she had slept with five different men five guys and these men then went on to write very favorable um, reviews of her independently developed game called Depression Quest, which was literally just a slideshow. It was no, not a game. There was some decision making, but like, it, uh, to be 100% accurate, it was a game that could be played on Microsoft PowerPoint. It was not a actual game. Uh, so when this started um, getting out and it was factually accurate and it was true, uh, the games press did not um, oust these journalists who had slept with a woman in exchange for reviews. They rallied around. They called it a conspiracy theory. They called it a far right wing misogynistic harassment campaign. And to be 100% clear, they won. All these people, um, I'll go from left to right. Uh, it is Sargon Abakad, a.k.a. Carl Benjamin, Milo Yiannopoulos, um, Adam B Baldwin, I remember that this time, uh, Medeker, and then Ethan Ralph. The five, as it says here in the comic, the five great men who helped save Western civilization. Uh, they actually lost, to be 100% honest. The people involved in Gamergate on the opposition side were called the SJWs, and there were people like Brianna Wu, um, I mentioned Zoe Quinn, then Nina Zarkeesian. And they literally went to the United Nations. They were invited by the United Nations to give a speech about female harassment online. Um, and the many other men and women involved in this on the left side uh, secured the reins of Wikipedia. They installed new policies on Wikipedia, such as the living autobiography um, standard, which means that any page about any organization or any person um, on Wikipedia, if you edit that page using a VPN, you're automatically banned. You're permanently automatically banned from Wikipedia as a whole. Your uh, revisions are edited. There's specific guidance that are top-down controlled on Wikipedia. So you can't edit anything about uh, an actual topic that's not like purely scientific unless you have explicit authorization from the gayest, most retarded faggots that have ever lived. Um, that, that was the result of Gamergate. Um, Gamergate has been described now retroactively as like an attempt to murder women. Jace Connors crashing his mother's Prius and then doing a rant um, has been used as evidence that they were literally trying to drive to Brianna Wu's house in Massachusetts and, and murder him in cold blood. Uh, they basically have gotten the free reins to say whatever the fuck they want. Uh, and things like this are now cringe because all these people hate each other, uh, to be 100% honest. <laughs> um, yeah, me, uh, Milo is like a homosexual. Um, Ralph is obviously Ralph. Medicare's dying of AIDS. And Sargon is like playing with toys or some shit now. I don't know what he does. Um, and I mentioned all this because Gamergate 2 is happening. Uh, this time it's under very dis different circumstances. Um, but it's in line of modern day politics. There is this thing called Sweet Baby Inc. Sweet Baby Inc. I can't remember exactly who it was, but it's like some of the people involved in Gamergate, they didn't just disappear. They went off into corporate jobs related to DEI, and they now run companies uh, that are contracted out specifically for, um, for DEI. So Sweet Baby Inc. is a narrative improvement resource. Um, I think I'll, actually this one describes it best. 
Uh, the CEO is Kim Belair, and it says, My guest for this episode is Kim Belair, a video game narrative writer and CEO of Sweet Baby Inc., a black and queer-owned narrative development company based in Montreal, working with AAA and independent games. So her job as a gay black woman is to improve the narrative experience of, of video games. Um, however, some gamers decided, hey, this company is involved in a lot of games that had very unsatisfying narratives. So like for instance, Alan Wake 2's character being a black woman randomly was something that people pointed out to that it seemed like a last minute change. It seemed like a role that was written for a white man and then they just randomly swapped him out to be a black woman at the last second. Um, so people blame that on Sweet Baby Inc. However, they deny that. and uh, But that didn't stop them from making a Steam group. As you can see, Sweet Baby Inc. Detected now has over 220,000 followers. And is one of the fastest growing Steam groups that have ever been created. And it's simply a list of games. Um, I mean, there's 16 of them, 16 games that they know for sure that Sweet Baby Inc. had a hand in improving the narrative experience of. Uh, and that's all it is. But this also, uh, they had a forum. Um, and then after, so I'll save that for a bit. So this resulted in a, a woman named Alyssa Mercant in Kotaku, the famous Kotaku that was also heavily involved in sweeping it up for the original Gamergate, wrote a huge article about how Gamers are simply wrong. Um, this is one of the games where the, I think they put more clothes on the woman for the Western release because um, the Western markets are like more sensitive to like titty ladies running around and shit. And this was blamed on Sweet Baby Inc. Uh, there's a part where they specifically mention um, Kiwi Farms, um, I think twice. I think they might have edited this. Oh, they did. Oh, wait, wait, she spells Kiwi Farms in... Okay, so she spells Kiwi Farms as two words correct, correctly one spot, and then says it as one word in a different spot. Um, the Kiwi Farms post used to be a link to the actual Kiwi Farms, specifically our thread on Sweet Baby Inc., which existed three days after um, V started talking about it. So uh, it, it's really interesting because uh, the this author was trying to, um, and still is, just doesn't link directly to the Kiwi Farms anymore. They removed the link trying to to poison the well um and it was so it's so obvious what they're trying to do because obviously the kiwi farms did not in their the 20 page thread on sweet baby inc did not start this and it was so obvious that even asmongold was able to identify this and uh, let's see here a 2023 kiwi um the steam group now has over a hundred thousand followers in its own discord boasts nearly two thousand members but it's ire against sweet baby inc and it's uh diversity equity inclusion initiatives in general isn't new october 2023 kiwi farms uh posts a similar sentiment so what they're doing right here is so kiwi farms is like just basically a uh you know like it's a lol cow website where they just like have different threads about different content creators etc and they don't like different people so what she's trying to do here is that she's trying to compare them to a group that is already seen in a negative light by uh and and then by extension of that make them look like they are also those same people because there are a lot of people that have negative feelings about companies like sweet baby inc but why is it that they compared uh they compared her explicitly to kiwi farms well it's very simple it's because that's the one that people that watch and read these articles will think, oh, it's like Kiwi Farms. That means it's bad. You see what I'm saying? So even though I only know Gold from um, pulling a cockroach off his shirt, even he, a man who lives in Phil, literally homed with cockroaches, uh, is able to look at this article and immediately identify that it is a a smear campaign designed to take this existing thing and make it relate to this other thing that people already don't like. Um, somebody even posted this video in response to um, this on Twitter. I'll just play this real quick. In 1943, the following directive was issued from party headquarters to all communists in the United States. It read... When certain obstructionists become too irritating, 
label them after suitable buildups as fascist or Nazi or anti-Semitic and use the prestige of anti-fascist and tolerance organizations to discredit them. In the public mind, constantly associate those who oppose us with those names which already have a bad smell. The association will, after enough repetition, become fact in the public mind. In 1943, uh, the sorry, following direct... Yeah, but yeah, that's uh, like it's obvious what she's up to. Um... And this is another person who worked at the company. Uh, I don't know if it's a him or her, but it's Felix at home at Lego Butts, who I think is a name. Oh, yeah, this is a Gamergate name. Uh, so the, these are old Gamergate posts, but also this is a person who works high up at the company. Um, he or she says, pay me to shoot down your white male lead game ideas. I usually get grossed out when straight, white, rich people kiss, but I think those two are pretty cute. I just had a thought about trying this again with a photo of a young white person, but it ripped but about to be ripped open but i'm betting folks will immediately flag it as traumatic and i'm guessing the image would get taken down before responses accumulated i had a nightmare that i was a white male gamer and this is a quote saying uh, we have to look at the story and narrative as one of the things we can innovate on like you bring someone in from a different culture from a different background from a different gender they're going to create something that we haven't seen before that way we look at the demographics is that we go okay the majority of our players base is like a white male so we're going to make stuff for white males but if you make something from the perspective of an Asian trans woman and it's really strong, it will work for people. People crave new stories. If you want to innovate, even to stay current, it's not about graphics, it's not about hardware, it's about opening up new perspectives for people. So I explain it as it's important to game development to diversify. It's not just part of an advocacy or activism. It's going to make your games better. Um, Alex then says, okay, also, of course, gamers are mostly white guys, but if you're making games for white guys, um, you're making games for white guys. Try making games for somebody else. Maybe they'll show up. So only the only way to appeal to people now is to target that coveted Asian transgender demographic. If your game does not directly appeal to Liz Fong Jones, then it even won't appeal to white guys. And that's that's what they're really trying to sell here. By the way, this is their logo in the bottom right. And even though I don't particularly buy into this, um, the the whole the old FBI like pedophile symbol thing uh, is being swept around because it has like that spiral effect that's common here. Um, I don't really think that's the exact same thing at all, but that's another thing that's being pointed out. People ask why Alyssa Mercant didn't mention the fact that the people involved were um, racist towards white people, and it's because Alyssa Mercant is this thing. I don't know what you want to call this. Um, there's there's a word that jumps out to me. I I said the tip of my tongue, but I just can't think of what it is. Um, but she says, "Hi, you can't be racist against white people." Thanks for tuning in. So she uh, got into a, like a tism fit on Twitter and immediately called out people trying to say, "Hey, um, you shouldn't uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't mention the fact that they're racist against white people." And she goes, "Actually, you can't." So. Uh, so this is what this is. By the way, this is one of my offerings for um, strong women for for Women's Day. <laughs> uh, the reaction to this article, by the way, was that Steam locked the group um, or asked the owner or curator of the group to do something about their forums because they said we're probably going to delete your curator group if you don't do something. Um, so the owner went ahead and just completely um, deleted the 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 forum so that the curator group wouldn't be at risk of being deleted as a consequence of the um, posts being made there uh, that weren't being moderated. So, um, yeah, I think that even, I think they said that Valve had was one of their customers too. So I'm thinking, I, I don't know um, for sure, but I think that Half-Life Alex was also um, worked on by, um, by them. That's, that's what I had seen. There was a conspiracy that, they um sorry that the uh the curator group also they also worked on half-life alex so they have like direct ties to valve we're able to get that i'm not 100 percent sure on that what's the elephant in the room did i miss something did i miss something regarding this because i i thought i covered this pretty well 
That was smart. I'm not taking any of the notes. I mean, Alex was a character in the existing Half Life. Um, so it's not, not not too far of a stretch. Most devs use this cringe. Do not buy anything. Dude. Yeah, I mean, it has been declared. The question the it, the interesting thing about like a Gamergate 2 now is that number one, we're all 10 years old. <laughs> Like, we're all in our 30s and 40s. All the people originally involved in Gamergate are now, like, j either, like, they're either just, they're somewhere between just turning 30 and just turning 40. You know what I mean? Like, Ralph is, like, 38, 39. I'm turning 32 this year. So, it's, <laughs> it's all just old people. The question is, do young people care? Where do 20-year-olds post? Do 20-year-olds post, like, on the internet now, or do they just use TikTok? Because I don't, everyone, everyone seems so old. The Gamer Game Veterans, yeah. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that's interesting about, um, about Gamergate, like coming back, quote unquote, is that the media is now in a much worse position than they were in uh 10 years ago because as, as i mentioned in 10 years ago people still read like games news and shit now nobody nobody trusts any kind of publication and publications are way worse than they used to be like if you search something and you get like a news article it's almost always like some machine learning generated piece of shit that only exists to advertise stuff and it's like you google like um last epoch how to maximize minion damage and they go last epoch is an action rpg set strewn across shards of time many players prefer the necromancer for their minion based zoo keeping tactics that allow you to swarm your enemies with destructive elite skeletal and necromancer forces here is how you can upgrade your skeleton damage uh, item a Put points into these perks. Item B, look for these modifiers on your weapons. It's like, I don't fucking, I don't need this shit, okay? Just tell me what I'm looking for. Anyways. So it'll be interesting to say. It might go nowhere. I put out the alert that Sargon and Akkad needs to come back. Um, am I reading this from ChatGPT? No, it's just how every article sounds like now. Um, you look up how to put how to make hollandaise sauce. Hollandaise sauce is a decadent dish originating from uh, from Liege in Belgium in nineteen four or wait fourteen ninety three. Famously, King Bonaparte liked hollandaise sauce on his lobster, which was called lobster Theodore. The word Theodore being from the revolutionary French calendar, which no longer is used. It's like, I don't need to know this. <laughs> How do I make hollandaise sauce, you piece of shit? My grandma used this recipe. I don't fucking care. Thanks. Um, why do I know all this? Dude, I know everything. <laughs> Big sauce gun. They'll never catch me. I'll teach people how to make wholesome, heckin' wholesome hollandaise sauce, okay? Thank you for watching this clip by Colonel J. This is the King of Bold here. Remember to like and subscribe. Juice!